Israeli occupation army perpetrated a new massacre in the northern Gaza Strip, where locals were waiting for the arrival of trucks with humanitarian aid. In Syria, Israeli fighter jets carried out missile strikes on the towns of Hiyera and Zayeda Sainad, 10 kilometers south of the capital. And in Bolivia, authorities declared a state of emergency in the Amazonian city of Cobija due to heavy rainfall that has affected an estimated of 570 families. Hello and welcome to From the South. My name is Belen de los Santos and from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba, we begin with the news. Palestinian authorities denounced on Thursday that the Israeli occupation armor perpetrated a new massacre in the northern Gaza Strip, where locals were waiting for the arrival of trucks with humanitarian aid. Preliminary reports indicated that more than 100 people were killed as Israeli snipers and tanks opened fire on hundreds of people waiting to receive food supplies in the Rashid Street. In this regard, the Ministry of Health in Gaza indicated the wounded were transferred to the Al-Shifa Hospital, a health center that they already warned is facing lack of supplies to care for all the patients. It is worth noting that this crime occurs while the citizens of Gaza are suffering from unprecedented levels of acute food insecurity and hunger. The month of Ramadan is approaching and for the Palestinians the situation does not seem to be improving, although they remain optimistic about a possible ceasefire. Our correspondent Nur Harassin updates us with the latest news on the ground. It is almost 10 days until the holy month of Ramadan and this uh, holy uh, month is very significant for the Palestinians. Normally they would go out and get prepared by uh, decorations or by food. However, Palestinians are already starving uh, while preparing for the month of uh, Ramadan. However, they are optimistic and hopeful that there will be a very near uh, ceasefire. Talking about the latest on the ground, the situation is actually the same, or if we can say it is getting worse, as Israel continued attacks on uh, the Gaza Strip. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, now the number of Palestinians killed in Gaza is more than 30,000 people. We are also talking about 8,000 people who are missing still under the rubble. So technically, we are talking about around 38,000 Palestinians between killed and missing in Gaza since the uh, 7th of October. Palestinians are actually uh, hopeful about the pressure of the international community ahead of the month of Ramadan, especially when talking about Arab and uh, Muslim countries. Maybe as uh, we are going closer to this month, this will put more pressure on Israel and also on Hamas to reach a ceasefire agreement here in Gaza. Nur Harazin, Tilisur, Gaza. Nearly 2.2 million people in Gaza are suffering from food crisis, the highest number of acute food insecurity ever recorded. According to the local authorities, the situation is getting worse and worse due to the severe restrictions of fuel shipments, delivery of basic foodstuff and electricity supply. On the other hand, there is a persistent shortage of drinking water in the enclave where about 97% of the vital liquid below the Earth's surface is unfit for human consumption. The United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization warned that around half of the Gazan population is in phase three or higher of the hunger classification, a situation that represents a record for the organization. In this context, six infants reportedly died from severe malnutrition on Wednesday at the Kamal Al one Hospital and the Al Shifa Medical Complex in northern Gaza as a result of the ongoing Israeli military blockade imposed on the region. Medical sources confirmed the tragic death, adding that seven others remain in critical condition, facing severe risks due to the prevailing drought and malnutrition. Last week, the global nutrition cluster 
doc documented a steep rise in malnutrition among children and pregnant women and breastfeeding women in the region, which poses grave threats to their health. As the ongoing Israeli aggression on the Gaza Strip enters its 21st week, food and safe water have become incredibly scarce and diseases are on the rise, compromising women and children's nutrition and immunity and resulting in a surge of acute malnutrition. Palestinian authorities reported the death of two Israeli soldiers from a toxic fungus while they were in the Gaza Strip as part of the Tel Aviv regime's aggression. The death toll has risen to three due to this infection since 2023. The soldiers suffered serious injuries to their limbs on the battlefield and were transferred to hospitals where they developed a resistance to all the treatments tried by doctors. The victims died after the fungus reached their organs. According to the medical sources, the fungus may have originated in soil contaminated with sewage. On Thursday in Syria, Israeli fighter jets carried out missile strikes on the towns of Higuera and Sayeda Sainab, 10 kilometers south of the capital. Through social networks, local media disseminated images of the attacks and of the firefighting teams trying to extinguish the fires generated by the bombings. The Syrian Ministry of Defense reported that the air defense systems were activated to repel the attacks, which occurred at 9.35 local time p.m., which were aimed at several points in the rural areas of Damascus. The Syrian government denounces the constant Israeli attacks, asserting that they constitute a violation of their sovereignty and of international law. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs urged the United Nations Security Council to fulfill its responsibilities and put an end to these aggressions. Meanwhile, in Spain, the leader of the Podemos party, Yone Velarra, called on the government to stop the hypocrisy and impose the arms embargo and break off relations with Israel for the genocide in the Gaza Strip. During the debate of the proposal presented by Podemos, Velarra ratified that the long suffering of the Palestinian people is reduced because of the passivity of the Western countries, which has lasted almost 80 years. The Secretary General of Podemos attributed the lack of response to the genocide to a cruel and inhumane reason, but also a simple one, that Israel is an ally of the United States, so the government of Spain does not immediately break diplomatic relations with Israel in order not to anger the United States. Velara regrets that Israel has turned the Gaza Strip into an open-air extermination camp in the face of the silence of the world. Now let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates and much more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. In Bolivia, authorities declared a state of emergency in the Amazonian city of Cobija due to heavy rainfall that has affected an estimated of 570 families. According to the risk management unit of the mayor's office of Cobija, between Tuesday and Wednesday, the Acre River reached a level of 15.83 meters, affecting 14 neighborhoods in the region and surpassing the marks of the year 2015. The inhabitants were evacuated to the shelters with the little they could rescue from their homes. But due to the increase in water levels, the authorities are requesting the establishment of more shelters. The head of the Departmental Education Office of Pando, Guillermo Vargas, stated that the magnitude of the disaster has forced the suspension of classes in all educational units. 
We go now to Venezuela, where political organizations and social sectors signed the proposal for a national agreement on general principles, timetable and the application of guarantees for the 2024 presidential elections in the country. This Wednesday, the, in declarations to the press, the president of the National Assembly, Jorge Rodriguez, informed that the space for dialogue for the signing of the electoral calendar propose, proposal included nine rounds of works and more than 150 meetings in which more than 500 proposals were generated, grouped in three fundamental aspects of the electoral calendar. Rodriguez pointed out that the legislative proposal includes all the dates of the political factors of the country. He also stated that the document will be submitted to the National Electoral Council so that they will be the ones to decide on this matter. And in this context, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro congratulated the National Assembly and its president, Jorge Rodriguez, for the results of the days of dialogue and understanding. Seven referendums in our history. No other country has held seven referendums. The 31st election is coming. It was signed today at the National Assembly. After almost a month of inclusive and interactive dialogue with all political parties and social, economic, cultural, intellectual, academic, and religious sectors of the country. It has been an emblematic work. I want to congratulate the National Assembly and especially its president, Jorge Rodriguez Gomez, for the outstanding work they have done in the dialogues and understanding. And we go to Guyana, where CARICOM held the closing ceremony of its 46th conference after three days of intense debates on the country's issues. The meeting was attended by Brazilian President Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva as a special guest. During the closing ceremony of the conference, the Brazilian president advocated expanding cooperation and integration between Brazil and the countries of the region, especially in terms of transportation and logistics, as well as strengthening ties, seeking investments and agreements on common priorities. The president also detailed that one of the priority integration and development routes for the government is the Guyana Shield, which includes Guyana, Suriname and Venezuela. He also invited the Caribbean countries to join the Global Alliance Against Hunger and Poverty, one of the highlights of the Brazilian presidency of the G20, a group of the world's 19 largest economies and the European Union, which will last until the end of November this year. A CARICOM é parceiro fundamental do Brasil e parte indispensável da CELAC, sem a qual o projeto de integração regional permanecerá inacabado. CARICON is an essential partner for Brazil and an indispensable part of CELAC, without which the regional integration project will remain unfinished. And Argentinian airline and cargo workers are staging a 24-hour work strike to demand salary improvements amid threats from the Argentine government. So far, 300 flights have been suspended. The protest was called by unions and associations of the aeronautical personnel of Argentine Airlines. The strike has led to the cancellation of some 331 flights scheduled for Thursday, Wednesday, affected some 24,000 passengers. The demonstrators are demanding better salaries while denouncing the refusal of the Minister of Economy to sit down to dialogue with them. The strike was called after the government presented a proposal for a 12% salary increase for March, which represents a gap of 70% compared to the country's inflation rate. In Mexico, the regional prosecutor's office reported on Tuesday that two precandidates for mayor of the municipality of Maravatio, state of Michoacán, were murdered on Monday in separate incidents. The first victim was Miguel Ángel Reyes Zavala, a doctor who aspired to be a candidate of the Morena party of President Andrés Manuel López Obrador for mayor of the municipality and who was shot on Monday afternoon when he was on board his vehicle, according to military and police sources. 
The Michoacan prosecutor's office said in a statement on Monday night that the attack occurred when he was parked in the back of the San Rafael Clinic, where he worked, located in the Rancho La Huerta subdivision in the center of Maravatio. Hours later, the body of Armando Perez Luna, candidate of the opposition National Action Party for the same position, was found inside a car with gunshot wounds. And Cuba announced new fuel and electricity prices to take effect on Friday, March 1st. The announcement was made this Wednesday at a press conference attended by the Ministers of Finance and Prices, Energy and Mine, the Vice Minister of Economy and Planning and Vice President of the state financial company, CMEX. According to the announcement, the new fuel rates will only affect prices at the retail level, while wholesale prices will remain unchanged. As for electricity, 25% increase is proposed for big consumers, about 500 kilowatts an hour which is far from the country's average consumption. Now we ha have a final short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and also share the link to reach more people. Constant news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Final short break, don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. In Russia, President Vladimir Putin delivered the annual State of the Country address to officials and the general public at the General Assembly, where he set the guidelines for the further work of his presidency. During his speech, the president asked the Russian population to maintain national unity to face the challenges ahead, referring to the special operation that the nation is currently maintaining in Ukraine. Putin also pointed out that his government is planning methods of military development for the country in the face of the threats from the United States. Russian media reports that this speech is crucial as it comes just weeks before the upcoming presidential elections to be held between March 15th and 17th of this year. In his speech, Putin also gave an assessment of the situation in the country and outlined the tasks for the future. On Thursday in Pakistan, the parliament celebrates its first swearing-in session of the new members of the lower house. In this context, Pakistani local media highlighted that after the general elections of February 8th, the country faces political stability linked to the issue of the most popular leader of the country, the former Prime Minister Imran Khan, in, who is in prison and his party is blocked. In this sense, the current scenario suggests that the alliance achieved between the party's Muslim League of Pakistan and the People's Party of Pakistan will allow the former Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif to return to government, although his name was never among the favorites of the voters. France Senate on Wednesday adopted a bill to enshrine women's right to abortion in the Constitution. The vote cleared a key hurdle for legislation promised by President Emmanuel Macron in response to a rollback in abortion rights in the United States. Wednesday's vote came after the lower house, the National Assembly, overwhelmingly approved the proposal in January. The measure now goes before a joint session of the parliament for its expected approval by a three-fifth majority next week. Macron said after the vote that his government is committed to making women's right to have an abortion irreversible by constitution. Ce soir, le Sénat a écrit une nouvelle page du droit des femmes. Tonight, the Senate has written a new page in women's rights. This vote is historic. We will be the first country in the world to enshrine in the constitution the freedom for women to have control over their own bodies. This vote reiterates to those who don't know it yet that women in our country are free. This vote reiterates how attached we all are to this freedom. 
In other news, the president of China, Xi Jinping, held a meeting with his Sierra Leone counterpart, Julius Madavio, to promote and strengthen cooperation between the two countries. The Chinese president said that both countries are willing to consolidate trust, the mutual policy, and strengthen coordination in international and regional affairs. For his part, the head of state of Sierra Leone assured that his country defends the One China principle and firmly supports the protection of its sovereignty and territorial integrity. During this meeting, the two countries signed cooperation agreements in various areas related to the Belt and Road Initiative, agricultural economic development, and the implementation of the Comprehensive Development Project. Simultaneously, Chinese Premier Li Qiang met with a delegation from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, led by the Chamber's Executive Director, President Suzanne Clark. The Chinese official highlighted the 45th anniversary of diplomatic relations, where both sides have benefited from mutual cooperation and development. Li Qiang pointed out that the economies of Beijing and Washington and hardly complement each other, and called for cooperation and mutual benefit rather than confrontation between the two nations. And like this, we have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesorenglish.net and also join us on social media. We are on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and also TikTok. For Telesor English, my name is Belen de los Santos. Thank you for watching.